Um, with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Jack. Gary? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, said, I have a follow-up. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to get it done. Follow my dad's question. I should have thought it was that long. So if you've got a student that says it's in third grade, so it's going to take more than a couple of years if they had no English, how do they do math and all the other subjects? How do they learn everything else? What do you do? It's really interesting. Um, they, we work very closely with the classroom teacher, and um, I believe it's to your point, Mr. Kelly, um, that we do, um, we do have a lot of strategies in place. We find that they might not grasp a lot at the beginning, but they'll get enough English to start to grab onto things before they reach that command. So that command is on level with their peers. If you've been to a restaurant or a, a salon where they don't speak proficient English, you're still able to understand even though they haven't reached a proficient level. So you can see the children can understand when instruction is slowed down or when um, they are given individualized instruction. So again, that's one of the important things um, we, we work on is making sure the teachers understand that you need to use that differentiated instruction with yourself. Thank you. We also follow what we call like an integrated co-teaching model. So we as ESL teachers are required as part of our minutes to be inside the classroom. Um, and so with years of experience working with teachers over and over again, they classroom teachers are able to learn those strategies without necessarily the support of the ESL teacher at all times. So that's really helpful for them. And I was just going to add, that's my part yet, but um, some of our early applications um, are technology applications, um, such as Voxia. The students for literacy can hear the instruction in their own language. So I think technology, the advancements that we have with some of our, with some of our programs are going to help in that aspect as well. Thank you. Oh, you're all strong. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh, no, I got it. Thank you very much. Just yes, before you begin, Jackie, yeah. thank yes. you, ladies, for your presentation. I want to say the summer program, and Mrs. Danza was integral in, in getting that started at Blaisdell. And for you, Dr. Cassell. Well, we both worked on it together. <laughs> I th think that's a real positive, especially with the families coming in and seeing it, and they don't have that fear of what's going on in school. And I think that helps their English as well. Certainly, certainly. And we'll be sure when we do it this summer, we'll yeah, have a family day at the end of the year. They've sent an invite to have a fun summer. Well, oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Keep up the good work. OK, Ms. Dr. Gao. Well, thank you for having me again. Uh, so tonight, I am going to speak on behalf of the reading department. So as you know, I, my current role is the ELA TOSA. But for many, many years, I was part of this fabulous group of um, professionals within the reading department. Um, they're highly specialized and trained to provide not only, not only direct intervention to students, but also to be a support. Really, they're the backbone of, of our buildings as far as providing academic support, um, helping structure MTSFs to really meet the needs of each individual building within our district. Um, just a really exceptional group of people. So a reading department is made up of several reading specialists in the elementary. There's two in each elementary building with the exception of Blaisdo. Um, we are looking at the data here and, and trying to provide academic support where, where we need to be. Um, our reading specialists are trained in um, several different research-based programs. Here's just a few um, to point out, with, such as our healing um, um, our Wilson intervention, our highly thematic based interventions for students. We have some reading specialists uh, right now involved in a pilot that mirrors our pilot for our K12. Again, we're looking at the data of the needs of our students. Um, so we have a couple of different pilots there as well, providing some academic um, intervention support for um, our neediest students in terms of as far as literacy is concerned. Um, most of the reading specialists in the elementary is a pull out support group, um, small group, um, a little bit of push in, but for the most part, it's a pull out. Now, I put at the bottom of the slide for each one, there are additional AIS literacy um, support teachers in the building. They are not reading specialists, but 
each elementary school uses their AIS teachers in a, a little bit of a different way, again, to meet the, the needs of their building. Uh, but within each elementary building, we also have our reading specialists. At the middle school, there's one full-time um, reading specialist, and she works with both general ed and special education students. Our neediest children are in, that are special education students um, receive daily or daily hand intervention. Again, it's a highly specialized, um, intensive <coughs> somatic program. Those students are met with every day. And then she also has a pull-up groups, general education, those students um, receive instruction or support every other day. Again, there are also two other AIS um, ELA lab teachers in the middle school to provide instruction um, and to support and mentor the students in literacy. And then in the high school, there's there's not a reading specialist in the high school, but there is one full-time AIS ELA teacher. She um, runs the ELA AIS lab for 9 through 12. Uh, it's a mixed group of students based on, based on needs. Um, she also teaches a self-contained section of ELA. So just some um, data that I want to share with you. I had a, a little side conversation with Pat prior to the meeting. Um, had this meeting come just one month, um, you know, in February, I would be able to pull winter data to show fall to winter because I think we're slowly starting to make gains back from COVID. Um, but what I can share with you is some fall to fall data. So this is just one measure. This is our iReady data, ELA, collectively K through eight. So the the three columns there, it's fall 2019. There is not a bar for fall 2020 uh, over here. Um, the next bar you see, 21-22, we, we took a significant dip. Um, we, we really had a, a majority of our students that needed academic support and literacy. We're slowly making our way back. Um, we're seeing some gains where students are working um, at, if not a little above grade level, Again, this is for all data um, from 2022. I wanted to share this with you. Here's another um, data point that we have in the elementary. So to the left, we have um, kindergarten, and to the right, the graph shows first grade. This is um, this program is called AIDSWEB. It's an early literacy program, also a norm referenced um, in national percentiles. We're comparing our students to national norms. Um, and we, we do see some gains here when we're, we're, again, slowly starting to make our way back to where we were in 2019. Um, I wanted to point out the kindergarten data to you because the current kindergarten, um, we have students that last year, they were in our first cohort for our pre-K. And as, as you know, last year, we opened up for our community and our district wonderful two full day pre-K programs and boy are those solid um, and just as Carrie has invited you to some ENL if you are really looking for um, to get into the you know we can really see some, um, some significant growth that pre-K has done amazing things both that happened in the full day within the past couple of years um, so I wanted to point out that we're um, slowly again making our, our some gains that are both um, to the left, that's kindergarten, um, letter reading fluency, and then to the right, or reading fluency, um, strong indicators of literacy growth. Uh, goals for the reading department. Um, the reading department wants to continue their research-based interventions. They're looking to monitor the data from the pilot programs, as well as just continuing to reflect on their own practices, of what's working, where students are making gains and where they need to um, provide more support. Um, we're looking at parallel as, um, with our eSchool to identify uh, a system where we can collect our data and, and share our data and, and internally, um, where we can make data-informed decisions for our MTSS structures within the building and provide interventions. And then our third goal is um, more specifically on progress monitoring, so that's the day-to-day -day and weekly kind of monitoring where the teachers are using that data for their own instruction. So they're monitoring weekly or bi-weekly to say, okay, this, this 
you know, two students out of the six are making some gains. Let's shift our target the next four weeks if we move, you know, our, our, our groups around to meet the needs of the students. And then my last slide I just wanted to share with you. So at the high school, although there is, again, there is not a reading specialist, we have an ELA, AIS uh, teacher there where she's working with a majority of underclassmen. Um, our most, uh, the more intensive intervention is happening more in the, the NEST program with juniors and seniors, but the ELA lab teacher at the high school, she's working with um, uh, many different uh, grade levels to meet the needs of the students and to provide some academic support. There's a lot of MTSS work right now going on at the <coughs> high school um, to meet the needs of, of our current students. Um, we're working, they're working on some differentiated course pathways. And then we also have some ELA teachers that are providing um, AIS support during the day for students as well. So that is the update on the reading department and the different levels of support for literacy. And I don't know if you have any questions for me. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah you, and you, you hit on a real nerve on this with me because there was a presentation on November 15th at a board meeting. I think it was, I don't know if it was the English department, it was different ladies, but, um, and one of the graphs they showed us had to do with, um, similar to the one you showed up there before, mm -hmm. which talked about um, proficiency levels. And when they were doing the presentation, I kind of got stuck on that graph. My brain just sort of shut down there. Okay. Because looking at that graph I was looking at, it was grade eight, spring of 22, and what it showed was 40% of our eighth graders mm -hmm. We took the assessment, we're reading three or more grade levels below. That's what, and I, and I talked to a few different people and said, I just, I just had really, I'm a numbers guy and I didn't really see the numbers. And it just stuck in my brain. And, you know, my background is technology, but what I always found in my experience, there's a lot of people that can just learn things by doing. And, well, there's not a lot, there's some people that can do that. But the people that, most people that I work with that had to learn things, they had to learn by reading. They had to read stuff. And when they couldn't figure it out, I used to say to them, you're not going to like the answer. Go read it. Go find it. Go research it. Yeah. And, and so reading just became so important in everything that I did in my professional career. And I really worry when I see anything about students that they're not reading. So I mean, cutting to the chase here, when I, I sent something out to the board a couple of weeks back or a month, and I pulled the, uh, the state data showing the report cards, and I was looking at the English language and the math scores at different schools. And I, without giving the details, I'd sent out Hamburg scores, we love the Bulldogs, and our scores, and I pulled Williamsville. Now, I understand Williamsville is a big <coughs> district and all that stuff, but, you know, I, and I circled the lowest scores and the highest scores because I wanted to kind of get a picture. I'm looking for what is norm. I didn't know what norm was. And like that one graph you showed today that we talked about, you're showing national norms, and it's the block is here, and frontier is below the national norms. And so that worries. So long story short, what I'm, what I'm wondering and asking for is, what, I know you guys are busting your homes. What can the board do? What what can we do to help improve reading scores in our district? I know you're I know you're doing a lot. I don't know if it's a resource. Is it people? Is it programs? I don't. I'm a tech guy. I don't have the answer. But I would I would say to you, ladies, first, thank you. Second, whatever it is we need to do, and I'm sure you talked to Chris and Colleen. Let us know because I just this I this bothered me for weeks after that presentation and. And I appreciate everything you know. I just oh, no, I'm happy to be here. We, we have to, we have to, and I know you can't make everybody, but what do we, our numbers look low. Yeah, yeah. you are, you know, I, you are right on, obviously, I think, and I know literacy is the key to everything, right? Regardless of where you want to go in life, literacy really, I really truly believe that is the key for all um, career, um, college life. Writings. You want to learn how to, you know, my snowboarder right, broke, right. broke and, you know, try to fix it and read, whatever. Um, if you're asking me. Yeah. And I'm not looking for the answer question, tonight. I, I yeah. would say. What, whatever it is you guys need, please go well, through channels and please right make there, sure I think that, that comes back up to the board. One, the support of the board. I think um, this district, you know, I've been here a long time and I can say that the past couple of years, we're getting some really key people into place. We've got a strong, supportive board. We have resources now that we haven't had in years. In the past couple of years, Linda and I just had this conversation. I think the past couple of years have been, you know, we're, we're, we're slowly pulling it together. And I'm certainly having Mr. Spytek here leading the charge and pulling everyone together and our 
um, administrative team coming together. It's exceptional. I firmly believe in early intervention. Um, I think it's easy to look, and, and I do think we need to keep a track of region scores and high school scores, but I also think, and the research will show, that early intervention, you put $1,000 into somebody, a fifth, you know, five-year-old versus an 18-year-old, you're going to get a real bang for your buck when you look at early intervention. And for a while, we really were coming along, and I think just um, all those years when funding was tight, we, we kind of got away from that. And I think we're slowly starting to come back with our MTSS and our elementary, really looking at um, not just maybe the logo, but like looking at all the kids. So I know when we really shifted to MTSS at Big Tree, we talked to the parents to say, listen, everybody's involved in MTSS. Our average kids, our high kids, everyone is getting some type of support. So our high kids, we really wanted to keep enriching them. And then our average kids, we wanted to keep growing them as well. And you know, you then you see all that they're doing now in the high school with different pathways. It's the same thing. So I appreciate you saying that, Kat, and I, I think right there, you asking that is, is, is just key. Um, I would, you know, again, my answer to that would be I would continue what the board is doing, getting the departments in here, seeing what they're doing, keeping an eye on the data, and that's what I'm that. We also really need to build a very solid, consistent MTSS throughout the four elementary programs, which they are doing, and we need that phonics program in place as soon as possible. Um, and now I'll leave on campus here, Mr. Boyle. So I have an equal question for, for the team here. Is <clears throat> unlike any other year in all of our educational years, we've never, all districts have never had to completely justify the progress and or regression for money that we've received over three years. Mm -hmm. And at some point, the rubber's going to hit the road for every district in New York State. Mm -hmm. To address Mr. Boyle's question, do we have the mechanisms in not only ELA, but all of our cores to accurately measure growth and or regression in our schools? So since we have our ELA experts here, I, I guess I would only ask, are you comfortable with our measurement systems? If you're not, that's fine. It's, it's fine, and I can tomorrow Mrs. Dugan and I have a conversation. I don't, speak on, um, I don't want to speak for the English Language Arts Department. I'm just going to speak from my own ELA POSA perspective. Sure. Um, I think some of our, our, our ELA um, measures are solid. Um, our teachers are using the data. Um, the data is reliable. It's um, timely. Principals can use it in, in a variety of ways to move what's best for their building. I think there's some pockets that need some growth, um, and we're looking right now at filling in those gaps. So, um, so I think we're on the right track, um, and I think that if we continue in the direction until the end of the year, where we're going as far as our um, our work with our standards leaders. Um, I want to say maybe shaping up some of our CFAs, um, as Tony has shared, getting the four elementaries consistent and together, which they're just about there. I, I would say yes, that I feel that um, the English Language Arts Department and certainly the reading specialists, um, that they have that system in place. And I, I get what you're saying, because you want this to keep propelling forward whether or not um, that additional funding is coming in or that additional support is there. And I think when you are investing right now in a system, you want it to, you want it to carry on. And right. So to be clear, teachers do what teachers do, right? They, they, they do their best to provide a level of excellence of academics in the classroom. And I've seen multiple examples of that high level instruction in just about every classroom I've, I've been in that frontier. Is there a need for a systems check, if you will, for us to prove the value of growth or regression? 
and if there if there isn't, if if the resources are there, and the energy and time and money is there, and all the pieces of the puzzle are there, now we just got to wait. Now let's see how time progresses through it. Then we accept that as a time management issue, and we see the progress. If our systems aren't correct, then that's when we have to analyze our systems to figure out what measurement tools we have to consistently use across the board. Can I add something to that? Yeah. Going back to that ELA presentation, I would just ask that we keep in mind of the regions versus the non-regions too. Um, at, at that point, that only focused on regions. There is a whole other population that needs to be accounted for and tracked. Right. And you are correct, and I think that's um, what I was maybe um, trying to express, that there are some pockets where our system or our MTSS structure and our data um, needs to sharpen. And I think right now that work is being done. So going into next school year, it should be rock solid as far as the English and the arts department, and certainly, again, the reading department with MTSS thinking about it. But yes, you are with you are that. You, you know, if I can just jump in, um, I think the power of collaboration and discussion among um, teachers and administrators and really taking a look critically at what we're doing, the systems we have in place, um, including our assessments, including what we're doing with students through MTSS, um, with our reading specialists, et cetera. Um, I feel someone who's been here a while. We're making progress and looking at things critically, identifying red gaps, identifying things in our system that are not working, and finding ways that we can more effectively meet the needs of all frontier students, whether it's students who require more support, students who are average, or students who need to be challenged and pushed. Um, I can tell you through our collaboration within the district and with our BOCES curriculum specialists, I am seeing that we are identifying those areas in our systems where we do need to look critically and perhaps replace something um, with something else um, to take a look at how we're assessing students on a regular basis to, de to determine where they are with the standards and to determine what we can do to differentiate our approach um, in the classroom tier one as well as our tier two and tier three supportive students. So Chris, I, I, Mr. Swatek, I do see um, the conversations occurring, um, the power of collaboration, if you will. Um, and I, I do see, see good things happen. Are we there? We have a ways to go, but I do see us making some progress. And um, that excites me. Well, ladies, first I'd like to say thank you for sustaining the Spanish Inquisition or putting... <laughs> no, it's not my intent. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I greatly admire that. And, I, and I, believe me, I see the effort. It's not because of lack of effort. What concerns me is whether or not we're providing the, the mechanisms and the systems for the measurements because unlike any year I've ever been in education, no, the federal government has never held us to the tarmac and said, you have to prove this. And I have to be comfortable with Mrs. Dugan when I go to her office and say, how are we going to prove this? Because I have to share with the board, how are we proving this numerically? So, Can I just jump yeah, in? Yeah, absolutely. I think the, it's too bad it isn't February because then you could do oh, yes. a comparison from the beginning of the year to now. And I think that's part of what we're looking for is, you know, how many students were at one level and now they've progressed or regressed. And that will help you to fine tune the system. And, you know, COVID, I mean, I hate keeping it alive, but that did do a lot to hurt kids in the primary grades for reading instruction where it's the most critical. So it's certainly not an indictment of anybody who's teaching reading or working with students because now we have things in place. And I guess for me, I will be thrilled when I see how they have progressed from being, I mean, it's hard enough for a middle school or a a high school student to be on the computer learning things, but those little ones really need teachers with yes, them and their peers. So I think we're going to see a lot of progress as we go forward. It's just 
We want it yesterday. I know. <laughs> we have to wait till tomorrow. One piece, like we found that preschool cohort that's in first grade or kindergarten now, as we follow them, which is they yeah. started last year. Right. I think that's really going to be interesting to see how they go and over time, you know, hopefully they follow what research research shows that they won't need as much academic or right. behavioral support as they have. I'd like to add my thank the yous window too. and I read it literally starts tomorrow and one night. <laughs> And we'll be able to see how our kids are um, progressing toward making the typical growth Great. and their stretch growth. And maybe you can share that with Chris and the board and we'd Absolutely. be happy. You don't have to come back. Maybe. You could just send it. <laughs> maybe, maybe in May or June they come back at the end of the year. Oh, that could be. Dr. Costello, we are missing a piece of the high school in terms of we have I ready the elementary and middle right. school. So we're looking to get that's the system we need in place. We also need to become more comfortable at the secondary level for common formative assessments, something we're looking at. And overall, just be, be proud of what we're doing and be able to speak the data more everyday language. Um, because we have phenomenal teachers, great students, but we do have pockets we have to work on, but there is growth happening. Yeah, and the other thing, and I think the percentage sometimes is misleading with the number of students that opt out of the three through eight testing. Yep, definitely. You know, that kind of skews the data as well. So that's just another variable. That's why it's really great to take the various data points um, and recognize mm -hmm. iReady is one point. State assessment is one point. But when you take them all together, it does give you a picture. A better of picture. Yes. Yeah. And that's what we strive to do. Very good. Okay. Keep up the great work. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. It brings us to committee reports. Advocacy, Mr. Petkowski. Uh, yeah, so we haven't had a meeting since uh, my last update, but coming up later in this month, uh, there's the ECSB legislative team meeting on January 19th, which is right before the legislative breakfast and advocacy training, uh, which is the morning of the 21st. And then our next frontier advocacy meeting will be January 25th. Thank you. Mr. Boyle, audit. Only at the next meeting will be March 14th. Thank you. <coughs> Seven thirty in the morning. <laughs> Mr. Diplock. <laughs> uh, facilities, Mr. Diplock is in here. Do you want to come out to support your next we'll meeting? Leave. It's coming up. Yeah, right? it's coming up. But we didn't need that. Nothing to do. Nothing to do. Construction's really slowed down, obviously, because of the oh, weather. Wow. Cool. Uh, they did get the tarmac down for the, the girls' softball, and it's kind of shut down. So <clears throat> we're getting ready to wind up in the spring. Great. So with that down, both facilities will be ready for the spring. It looks very good for that, yeah. Um, and it's going to be a coincidence, Trustee Kilcoin, but they're going to be playable on the exact same day at the exact same time. Wow. <laughs> yeah, like April yeah. 1st. <laughs> Neither side is going to start before the other, yes. Mm -hmm. Finance and budget, Mr. Kilcoin. Nothing to report. Our next meeting will be the 17th. Back to you, Mr. Podkalski, IDA. Just our next meeting is January 18th. Thank you. Safe schools, Mr. Boyle. Uh, we met on December 21st, first thing in the morning here in this room. We had a really well attended meeting. Uh, Superintendent Smytek ran the meeting. There were several items. I'm just going to some of the high points. We talked about the Car Rider Pro program, which I believe is the hardware was installed at Pinehurst. They were training the staff. This was as of the 21st of December. Next location is Big Tree Schools. That's to get the kids into the cars a little more efficiently, a little safer. Um, they got a challenge at Blaze Delta. We get the new bus loop in, and the same with traffic problem at Cloverbank. Um, window film is completed at Blaisdell, Big Tree, and Cloverbank. Next, looking at Pinehurst Middle School and High School. It may be FEC as to the height of the windows. More to follow on that. Um, Evolve, we've, we've received three of the machines for the high school. Um, the three main doors, they've got it figured out. Sensitivity, I'm not going to give a lot of details for some reasons, but we're looking forward to those machines being installed. And uh, they will also eventually pick up vape pipes, which is a good thing. That's a note to some of our students. Um, Let's see, what else? Just the high points. Um, we talked about panic buttons. There's three different kinds of panic buttons. And we had a long talk about, you know, we've got the valve systems in the high school and the middle school. We talked about elementary buildings. And is the threat really an outsider threat or is it more students carrying things into the building? And we're kind of leaning, the committee was leaning toward for the high school and middle school, you may have higher threats with the students carrying things in, thus the valve systems. Maybe for the elementary buildings, we're better off to look at some systems that lock all the doors down. 
So there's some different systems we're looking at for those. Um, that's one of our SROs was there, Officer Lars. He reported that both of the SROs attended five-day trainings put on by National Association of School Resource Officers in bright, beautiful downtown Scranton, PA. Um, so it was all good, and it gave them um, access to a lot of other national resources, and it was a good learning experience. And um, that's probably the high points of Safe Schools. Really good committee, very well attended, lots of comments, good discussions. Did I miss anything? Uh, no, that's outstanding. Um, I will say this, uh, Trustee Boyle, is that Mr. McDowell and I will be meeting with um, the the company with the internal lockdown systems on the doors for the elementaries later this week, is it? Uh, I thought it was Friday, next week, Friday or Monday? I think it's Monday. It's Monday, next week, Monday. So uh, we're looking forward to that and working with both seats to make sure that we maintain all fire codes and safety codes and all of that other stuff. So. Thank you. Yep. It is a, it's a really good committee. Student achievement, Mrs. Harrington. Um, we have our next agenda meeting this Friday. Um, and then our next meeting will be uh, the 17th. And again, we'll continue on with our discussions regarding the Star 50s um, and then including uh, your final assessments and to your overall uh, grade for that class. Our student report, Cameron. Yeah, not a lot for me. This week, there's eighth grade orientation at the high school for, uh, on Thursday from 6 to 8. There's going to be a lot of clubs there to showcase the extracurricular activities at Frontier. And I have an update from the middle school. They also held a very successful door decorating contest this year, as did the high school. And the student council and the guidance department at the middle school sponsored two giving trees that helped 22 front two middle school families with holiday presents this year. And on January 20th, they're holding their annual lock -in, Rock and Lock and Dance, which is exciting. Yay. Thank you. I'm glad you reached out to the middle school. That's good. Okay. How are you been, Good. Good. Yeah. Happy holidays. We too. haven't seen a little bit. I know, there's been the play, chorus concert. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see you again. That will take us to 9.6. Resolve the Board of Education approves the appointment of Karen Lewandowski, school district treasurer, at a prorated salary of $77,000 as per the attached terms and conditions of employment effective January 4th, 2023 through June 30th, 23. Further, this recommended appointment has fingerprint clearance from the New York State Education Department and Office of School Review and Accountability. May I have a motion? So moved. Mrs. Errington, second Mr. Kilcoyne on the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. 9.7 FCTA <clears throat> resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent. The following individuals are appointed to teaching positions. Salaries in accordance with the current district FCTA contract. All recommended appointments have fingerprinting clearance from the New York State Education Department, <coughs> Office of School Personnel Review and Accountability, except to the extent required by the applicable provisions of Education Law 2509, 2573, 3212, and 3014. In order to be granted tenure, the classroom teacher shall have received composite or overall annual performance, professional performance review ratings pursuant to Education Law 3012C and or 3012D. Amy Drew will be assigned to Blaisdell in special education as a regu regular substitute. Amanda Zablonski will be a mathematics teacher at the high school. May I have a motion? So moved. Mrs. Arrington. Second? Second. Mr. Boyle, I have a question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Are either of those ladies here with us this evening? No. 9.8. <clears throat> Excuse me. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education appoints the following individual to a registered nurse position salary in accordance with the current district FCRNA collective bargaining agreement and salary schedule. Further, this recommended appointment is fingerprint clearance from the New York State Education Department, Office of School Review and Accountability, and or New York State Division of Criminal Justice, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Nicole Zarban uh, will be a district float 
and she will begin on or about January 30th of this year. May I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Kilcoin, second Mr. Boyle on the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Is Nicole with us this evening? No. 9.10 FCEA <clears throat> resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent. The Board of Education appoints the following individuals to a support staff position, salary in accordance with current district FCEA collective bargaining agreement and salary schedule. Further, unless noted, these recommended appointments have fingerprint clearance from the New York State Department in, and Office of School Review and Accountability. Annie Weston will be a district floor cleaner. Ethan Switek will be a grounds worker district-wide. And Craig Kilgore uh, will be a part-time laborer at Clover Bank. May have a motion. So moved. Mrs. Arrington, second. Second. Mr. Cordier on the question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carried. 10.1. Mrs. Dugan. Strategic plan update. So um, we're planning our next steps with the seal of biliteracy at the high school to be awarded to approximately 80 eligible students. Um, we're working on um, the projects, committee work, and visits to other schools, especially West Seneca, who has invited us to take a look at what they're doing. Great. So we're very excited about that. We continue to plan our big picture program, including a detailed framework for development, hiring site visits, the student selection process, learning plan template, and technology needs we're working on now as per New York State Districts must include a remote learning plan as part of their school safety plans by September 1st of 2023. So uh, Mike Sullivan and I are getting that underway as well. As Linda and uh, Jackie mentioned, iReady Diagnostic Windows for grades K through 8 begins tomorrow and runs through January 18th for math and ELA. Um, team members from the Institute on Trauma and Trauma-Informed Care from UB work with our secondary and elementary social workers, counselors, and psychologists on December 16th, topics addressed included strategies to promote regulation. Their monthly meetings will continue throughout the academic year. We had 30 teachers participate and complete UB trauma-informed care professional growth for the fall session. Um, and there is also going to be another offering for pro growth for the spring session through UB. And I'm currently working with UB now to figure out a way how to add virtual support sessions to our families during the second semester of school um, to help with stress, anxiety, um, things of that nature. And um, I think that's about it for now. Oh, that's a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Pat? The remote learning thing, is that something that we made public? I mean, is, is that something so that, like, you know, something happens and we, like, snap our fingers and boom, we go remote and all the families know how that works? Is that what the deal is there? Yeah. That's what the deal is. <coughs> it has to be built right in. Okay. Yeah. That's great. So in a case like that, students are expected then to bring their Chromebooks home every evening so that they're at home? That's what we're, that's what we're that's looking part at right figuring now. It out. Yeah, we're also yeah. looking at, um, Trustee Kilcoin and Boyle, we're also, uh, Assistant Superintendent Dugan and I are also working on that next Superintendent's Day where we're going we're gonna to test our system like in a 20 or 30 minute window mm -hmm. uh, where uh, a teacher or a principal is just going to put a question, did you sign on? And it's just going to be a yes or no. So we get a feel of how good our kids are at, at signing on in the use of Google Classroom. So we're looking forward to that day because that's, that's a big test for us. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Brings us to 11.10, uh, the business management report resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent. The Board of Education accepts the business management reports 11.1 .1 through 11.10 as submitted. May have a motion. So moved. Second. Mr. Kilcoin, second. Mrs. Arrington, on the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carry. Okay. 12.1. Mr. Swipe? Yeah. Um, so. A couple things. I'd like to welcome everybody back from uh, a holiday break. Happy New Year to everyone, um, all of our staff, and, um, and, and it's really uh, it's really nice to see everybody back and, and working again. Um, I wanted a second shout out. If we we can't give these guys enough credit for yet another <laughs> buildings and grounds uh, emergency Lizard. evacuation, and uh, it, it's amazing yet again what the what the fellows got done in a short term. And we also had some temporary folks. 
um, that Myra was able to secure to help uh, our buildings and grounds folks as well to help out with folks taking vacation. I wanted to say a big shout out to our buildings and grounds, all of our maintenance staffs, our cleaners, everything. It was just a tremendous effort again. Um, uh, we have our friends from the FCTA here. We are getting closer and closer to securing an MOA for our big picture staff to get our school. That's uh, our next transitional step uh, for big picture along with the physical space that we're hoping to secure within the next 10 to 14 days. Uh, to keep that train moving down the line. The other thing I wanted to say on a, a very happy um, note is most of the cabinet and I, it is amazing what happens here holiday week um, before we go for break. The, the effort that our staff puts in, um, the holiday bus uh, was fantastic. We took pictures of it. The teachers' decorations in their classroom. We went to multiple uh, schools for decorations. We were voting on stuff. And going from, oh, and we the Big Tree concert, yep. when we saw the four-year-olds and the stuff. concerts Holy at stuff. the high school, and we went to the middle school. I, I went to all of the concerts in the last <laughs> week. But when you look at to the totality of what happens in that five-week window for just to make our kids and our families feel good about whatever holiday they represent. And we did our best to represent just about every, you know, family's interest that, that we could we could think of. I just wanted to say thank you to our entire staff for making our kids so welcome that week. And what a joyous time it was across the board to be part of the Frontier family. It's, we, we get caught up in these meetings focusing in on small pieces, but when you take in the totality of what we do daily, it's its really, it's awesome. So I wanted to say thank you to all of our staff uh, for all of those competitions, and I can't eat another cookie and brown. <laughs> I can't do that. You can always so, eat one more cookie. We can always eat, yeah, I don't know. I, they, I was floating away. One day I was in the middle school, I was just going, no more. No mas, no mas. <laughs> Um, so, and, uh, and I think, uh, the principals at the high school, they had a little coffee tray going around that one day. Oh, the whole middle school day. Yeah, the whole yeah. middle school. It was, yeah. a, it was just an amazing feeling in every yeah. single, yeah, every single building you went into, it was just a <laughs> smile on your face. It was just a good feeling. So I wanted to share that with the staff, um, and, uh, and say thank you to all of that. So that's my update. Thank you. 12.2, Board Policy, Second Reading. Resolve that the Board of Education, upon a second reading, adopts the following policy. Policy 3280, Use of School Facilities. Rules for use of school buildings, grounds, and equipment by outside groups. May I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Boyle, second? Second. Mr. Cordier, on the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Mrs. Arrington, carried. Davis, speak. Oh, Davis. Yes. So that's carried six, five to one. And now we go to the round table. And let's start with you, Mr. Kilcoin, please. Uh, again, Happy New Year, everybody. Looking forward to a strong finish to the year. Um, and I did get a chance through the Little Kids program to get into the middle school. Um, and the work that's been done in there is impressive. Just the, the paint and, and the lockers, um, well done. Kudos to the crew that, that was involved in dressing up the middle school. Mrs. Arrington. Um, happy New Year and, and always a thank you to all of our stakeholders. Um, and again, a, a shout out to buildings and grounds and um, to our coaches uh, over this winter break who last minute were, you know, modifying practice schedules and working with the district to get in on days they may not have usually been able to. And so, uh, you know, shout out to all of them for, you know, I'm sure their families, you know, had some situations going on with the weather and the holidays, um, but they came in here and they got those kids in here practicing and doing their competitions and, so just a shout out to them. Thank you. Mr. Boyle. Happy New Year. And uh, um, I want to say good luck to Karen Lewandowski, who's our incoming treasurer. Worked with her in the past through audit. She's always been really good to work with. And you know, I have high hopes that I know she'll do a great job. Thank you. Mr. Cordy. I would just echo the superintendent's um, heartfelt thoughts and welcome everybody back from the Christmas break. And thank you to the presenters tonight. 
Mr. Swaita, the Something pretty special is happening uh, for Frontier this Sunday. Um, Rebecca Galante, our girls lacrosse coach, is being honored by Highmark um, as an outstanding coach and community member throughout Western New York. And Highmark is donating two suite tickets to uh, her and a guest to the Highmark suite for the New England Patriots game. But in addition to that, she's being honored for all of the things she's done, both as an individual athlete and a contributor frontier. They're also giving us 22 additional tickets for her previous and past and current players that she can take to the football game. Um, and a check for $2,500 that uh, is going to go directly to the girls lacrosse team on behalf of Highmark. So I want to say awesome. thank you to the Highmark folks. And congratulations to Rebecca. And she's got this, if she's going to be on the big jumbotron, and there's this big presentation for her, and she's coming out of her skin. She's so excited. Um, wow, that's true. And, uh, that's incredible. It's, yeah, it's really good stuff for, uh, for her, her accomplishments, Frontier Central School, and all of her previous and past athletes and current athletes. Um, so we're going to have a little contingent of somewhere between 20 and 24 uh, girls uh, up at, at the football game. So. Excellent. That was great news. It yeah. was a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I want to uh, thank everyone for all they did during the Christmas holidays with the snow removal and all the spirit that was going on that Mr. Switek talked about and wish everyone a happy new year. And at that moment, I would like a motion to adjourn. So, come on. <laughs> Mrs. Arrington, second. second. Mr. Boyle. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you all. Thank you, folks. Have a good night. You too. Good driving. It's raining out here.